Okay, so if you watched my Samsung Galaxy S24 first things to do or killer features video, you might feel like you know it all already. But when you see what I've got for you in this video, you might be like, Son of a Why didn't somebody show me this sooner? So usually the middle finger is reserved for special occasions. But it can also be used in a less offensive manner that will save you time in the future. So check this one out. Go into your settings. Scroll down to where you see security and privacy. Scroll down again to biometrics and go to fingerprint. Now, if you have already mapped four of your fingers, you will need to delete one and register a new one specifically for your middle finger. Once you've registered your middle finger, make sure you tap on that and just call it middle or whatever you want. Now, here's the next very important step. You want to find the Galaxy Store the app looks like this. You should see it in your app library. And then here you want to search for GoodLock. Make sure you install this. And now that you have GoodLock, you want to go to the Life Up section at the bottom of the page and find Routines Plus. Once you've installed the Routines Plus, open it up and you will see some templates of some additional routines that are not pre-programmed into the device. And the one we're going to be looking at here is this one, Fingerprint to Website. So we're not gonna use this to open a website. We're gonna use this to open an app instead, which is way more useful. So check this out. We go to if, and we choose middle, which is the middle finger. Right now we're saying go to website, but what we can do here is go to edit and hit the little minus next to go to website. And instead we go to add what this routine will do. And here we can set up our middle finger fingerprint to basically do anything on the device. But one good use case for this, which I think is very useful, is to open the wallet. So at the top in the search bar, if we go to open, you'll see the option to open an app or do an action. And then here we'll have a ton of options. But what we're looking for is the wallet. Done. You can choose the icon for this. I'm gonna choose the shopping cart. I'm gonna make it red. That is now saved. And now this is set up perfectly. And next time you unlock your phone with your middle finger, it will open the Google Wallet straight away. So check this out. If you watched one of my other videos, I showed you how to double push the power button to jump straight into your wallet. That's pretty good. But now we can do it with one touch. And now that you've set up Routines Plus, if you go to the modes and routine settings within your settings menu, you can even map different actions to different fingerprints if you really want to. So you could have camera for your left thumb, maybe YouTube for your first finger on your right hand, but I do recommend keeping one digit for just opening your phone regularly. Anyway, you know how to do it now, play around with it and let me know how you get on with it. Now this feature is a fun one that your friends probably won't know about. It's an upgraded way to use you're always on display. This works best with photos with not too much going on in the background. Here, for example, I have a picture of the Phantom Menace, Oreo the dog, soon to be renamed Darth Maul because mauling stuff seems to be a God-given skill set. Anyway, check this out. If we pinch the home screen, go to wallpaper and style, change wallpapers, select the wallpaper that you want to use for your lock screen and apply that wallpaper. Step two is to go into your settings, go to lock screen and AOD, where it says always on display, tap there. And here you'll see a feature called erase background. And as you can see here in the little window, when we erase the background, it cuts out all of the background and just leaves the dog on the display. She is a dark colored dog, so she's getting completely lost in this picture. Let me show you a better example. There's a bit more brightness in this picture, so it should work a little bit better. So you'll notice here when I go to erase background, it removes everything around the dog and just leave the background black, which uses less power when it comes to always on display. And the next thing you wanna look at here is when to show. So typically this will be tap to show. If you put it on auto, it will detect when your phone's in your pocket or it's nighttime and there's no light and it will switch it off entirely. This method is very similar to what the iPhone uses. It's a little bit more power hungry than just tap to show, but it definitely looks better. So you might want to use it, or you could even schedule it if you're worried about battery life. So that's how you upgrade, you're always on display. Okay, so here I have a photo taken from Twitter from a fellow UK tech YouTuber, the man himself, the man of steel, Super Saf. And you can see in the middle of this photo, we have a mini MKB HD. And of course, I, Justine, who I did bump into once. I told her what time it was. Uh, 
It's 10.33. Okay, I didn't actually, I literally just ran away. Anyway, check this out. If you hit the pen, tap on the new Galaxy AI button. Now we can fix the problem with this picture or at least make it more realistic because MKB HD is pretty damn tall. At least that's what I heard. So if you hold your finger down on the subject within the photo that you want to adjust, you then get the four dots around the outside and we can actually move MKBHD around or we can resize him to probably closer to his original height. And you can see there's some gaps behind him now and that's where the AI comes into play. It can fill in those gaps and blend it in with the rest of the image. And there we go, we have a slightly improved and more accurate picture. Yes, the AI is not perfect at doing this just yet, but it works. So if you ever have an image where the person in the photo isn't quite where they're supposed to be, you can use this little tool to move them around within the image or resize them. Okay, so this next one you've probably already seen before, but I'm gonna show you another way you can use it to create some fantastic custom wallpapers. So first of all, let me show you the basic trick. So if you hold your finger down on a part of the image, you can turn that into a sticker. You can also share it straight away if you want to. If you do save it as a sticker, it will live in your sticker gallery, which is part of the Samsung keyboard, and you can add these effects to the sticker as well but you probably already knew that. And just in case you're looking for these stickers and you're not quite sure where to find them, all you need to do is go into your emojis section here on the keyboard. You should see the icon here that looks like your gallery, but it's kind of peeled up like a sticker. That's your own personal sticker album. And you can use these pretty much anywhere on the internet. But that's not the trick that I wanted to show you. It's this one, check this out. So these are two very popular wallpapers that I get a lot of requests for here on the channel. And I thought, well, let me show you guys how you can actually create something new or your own wallpaper by using stickers. So here on the Wolverine wallpaper, I'm gonna hold my finger down on the Wolverine there, move it around a little bit so it shrinks like this. I'm gonna to navigate to the Deadpool, I'm gonna drop it in here. Now we can resize the Wolverine. So there we go, we created one layer here on this wallpaper and you get the idea, you can use multiple layers and add multiple stickers to a background to create your own custom wallpaper. This looks pretty good as it is, but I could add even more to this. Let's drop Peter Parker in there as well. So you get how this works now. You can create a bunch of different stickers, layer them on top of each other to create something truly unique for your phone. And if the stickers don't quite blend, you do have the tools down here at the bottom to adjust the colors and the brightness and things like that. So it all kind of works better together. And let me know in the comments if you want any of my wallpapers. I got a secret link to that, which I'm happy to share with you. Okay, number four is a camera trick, but before I show you that trick, I wanna show you this. This Aramid fiber case for the Galaxy S24 was sent to me by Thinborn. It's super thin and it's got a MagSafe magnet in there as well. So you can use magnetic devices on the back of the phone with this case attached. It's super tough, it's super durable. And not only do you get the case when you buy one, you also get two screen protectors and cleaning accessories, as well as a handwritten note from the owner, Carl himself. And this is where the camera trick comes in. So if you ever get a handwritten letter like this and you want to convert it into text for digital formats, your Samsung Galaxy phone can do that. All you need to do is hover over the document and you'll see the little T in the bottom right corner. You tap that, that will scan that document and then you'll be able to convert that handwritten letter into a Galaxy Note or just copy all of the text and paste it pretty much anywhere. I'm gonna add it to a note. In the blink of an eye, you got your handwritten letter in digital text. Of course, the success rate with this depends on how good the handwriting is. Lucky for us, Carl's handwriting is pretty tidy and it's almost perfect over here. But you might need to cross-reference it. Don't trust it 100% if you're planning to use it to steal someone else's homework. Okay, here's a very useful tip when it comes to organizing photos within your photo gallery. So if you open the gallery, at the bottom here, you want to go to albums. And then here you go to plus at the top. And here you'll notice a few options. You've got the standard album, so you can just manually create that and drop photos into it whenever you want but it's this one, the auto updating album that you should definitely be using. Minimum effort, maximum results. That's the best way to do things in my opinion. So if you go to auto updating, call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it my name. So here you should see, once you've been using your phone for a while, a bunch of different faces and you can create albums specifically for those people. So if I tick my face there, there we go, it's added 48 photos. And every time I take a new photo, 
with myself in it, it will add that photo into this album. It'll also be available in the gallery as normal, but this is a great way that you can filter photos based off of who's in the photo. So have you ever been filling out a form on a website or on an app that's taking forever and you get to a point where you need a one-time passcode or a reference number from another document or an email or another app? So you leave the form that you've been filling out and when you come back, all the information that you already completed has gone. I feel your pain and yes, there's very few things that are more annoying than that when it comes to ordering stuff or booking stuff on a smartphone. So here's a way for you to avoid that happening in the future. Let's say for example, this is the app that we're filling out the form on and then suddenly we need to go to another app or go to the text messaging app to grab a code. If you really wanna make sure that this doesn't refresh and clear everything in the background, all you need to do is this. Swipe up your backgrounding, tap on the app icon, and here at the bottom of this list, you'll see keep open. So make sure you tap that and you'll notice at the bottom of this app now, you've got a little padlock here indicating that it is locked open. So no matter where you go on your phone from here, this will be permanently running in the background and not refreshing, which is the most important thing when it comes to forms. And this could also be a useful trick when it comes to games and things like that that might reset whilst you're off doing other things. Okay, so while we're talking about annoying situations where something happens that interrupts what you're doing on your phone, there's nothing worse than when a phone call comes in and completely hijacks your entire screen. And there's a few ways you can avoid this. I'm gonna show you my preferred method. So if you go into the phone app, go to the three dots in the top right corner, go to settings. On this page, you want to go to the section that says call display while using apps. And you can see right now, this is set to small pop-up. Now, if you really want to minimize the distractions, you can set it to mini pop-up. And while we're here, something else that's very useful to enable is this, keep calls in pop-up window. Because let's say you pick up your phone and then you immediately navigate back to the app that you were using before the phone call came in. In order to hang up, you probably have to swipe down your notifications, go back to the phone app to hang up. If you enable keep calls in pop-up, you'd have quick access to put down the phone as soon as the call is done. So play around with these. The mini pop-up is perfect. The small pop-up is pretty good. The full screen, not recommended. Okay, so there's a cool feature on the Pixel and the iPhone where you can tap the back of the devices to start an action on the phone. Now, when you look through the settings on the Samsung phone, you might think that it can't do this. But actually, if you think that, you're wrong. Because there is a way to enable this and it does involve going back to the Galaxy Store making sure that you've got the Good Lock app, navigating to the Life Up section and making sure that you have this one, Registar. And straight away, as soon as you open Registar, you'll see Back Tap Action. This is something you want to enable. I have used this in the past and I recommend you stay away from the double tap and only use the triple tap because the double tap is just far too sensitive in my opinion. Now you can go into the triple tap and here you can choose what you want this to do. Right now I've got this set up as the Google Assistant, but you can map it to any app of your choosing. So at one point I did have this set up as the wallet, but now I've got a few different ways to open the wallet. I don't really need that. That's why I've set it up as the Assistant. So check this out, a triple tap opens the Assistant. Okay, so have you ever been in a situation where you've been playing music to a Bluetooth speaker from your phone and then suddenly you've been distracted by a notification and you've navigated away from whatever it was that was playing and now there's a TikTok video playing through the speaker instead of the music. Well, you can actually stop that from happening and allow the music to continue playing and have the audio from whatever you want to look at still come through your phone separately. It's very easy to set up. So you go into your settings, you go to sound and vibration, scroll down to where you see separate app sound. Now here, this will be switched off by default. A lot of people probably never even use this because they don't know it's here. Switch this on. Now you can choose your music streaming app of choice. If it's not here, just go to add apps and add it manually. And at the bottom here where it says audio device, you wanna tap that and set this to Bluetooth. And as you can see right now, I'm already connected to the Clip 4 speaker, which is this tiny little speaker from JBL. Pretty handy little speaker, this one. Sometimes with this feature, you do need to switch it off and on again occasionally if it's not working properly. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna play a track here to the Clip speaker. I'm not gonna play it too loud, otherwise I'll get a copyright strike. So that's playing there. Now, if I navigate away from YouTube Music and open YouTube, let's say, and start playing a video, you'll notice anywhere on the home screen for now, 
and you can delete it at the end of this video. So Both devices are playing audio separately, so that way you can keep the music playing and carry on doing whatever it is you're doing on your phone without interrupting the music. Okay, so on a rare occasion, you might need to share your mobile data with somebody else, and this little bonus tip will help you help somebody else in those situations. So if you go to your settings, go to connections, mobile hotspot and tethering, enable the hotspot. Now, when you're on this page, two things you wanna keep in mind. First of all, I recommend you turn on one-time password. This means you don't have to give away your actual password to that person. And once they've used it once, it then expires and refreshes to a new password. So make sure you use one-time password as and when you need to. And the second thing I recommend you do, instead of actually giving them the password, is to generate a QR code. This means they can just use their own phone to scan this and log onto your hotspot without you having to read out the password in front of other people. Now, if somebody asks for your password, you can tell them. How about no? It's just a better way to do it, in my opinion. Now, staying on the same page, here's the actual thing I wanted to show you. So let's say one day your internet goes down whilst you're playing an online game, and you need to get back online as quickly as possible so you can get back to kicking some ass, or in my case, getting your ass kicked. Good at getting his ass kicked. He should call himself ass kick instead. <laughs> Either way, this mobile tethering trick could be very, very useful for you, but it could also be useful for work purposes as well. So on this page, scroll down to where you see your network name, tap on that. Now here you'll see this slider for the band. So 2.4 gigahertz is pretty fast. It's okay, it's the most compatible frequency to use. However, if you've got an Xbox or a PlayStation or a PC, you'll get much better speeds from your phone to that hardware if you turn this up. So you've got 2.4 and five gigahertz, just five gigahertz, and then you've got the six gigahertz, which is the fastest of them all. So if the hotspot is specifically for gaming with, this is what you want to use. Now check this out. If you expand the advanced section here, you do have some more options. So if you enable Wi-Fi six standard, that's basically the six gigahertz, which I just showed you. If you wanna get maximum performance, you could turn off the power saving mode here as well. That would just give you a bit more of a boost. Just make sure your phone stays plugged in if you're gonna use that. So there we go, that's how you maximize your hotspot speeds. So you might not know this, but Samsung and Google have now teamed up to merge Samsung's quick share feature with Google's nearby share feature. It's basically Google's version of Apple's AirDrop. And thanks to this collaboration, sharing stuff between Android phones it's now even easier. And one of the great features that you have here with Quick Share is the ability to set a time limit on the access. So let me show you how this can work now. So let's go to the wallpaper that I just created. I hit the share button at the bottom and we have the Quick Share right here, bottom left corner. Now it's scanning for nearby share and also Quick Share users. So we just need to make sure nearby share is on. Select visibility to everyone here and straight away my Sony phone pops up here. Tap that, and it's using Quick Share and Nearby Share here on the Sony phone. And there we go, the file has transferred across. Now here's where we can take it one step further. See the three dots in the top right corner here on the Samsung? If we go to that, turn on Private Sharing. Let's say you want to send a document to your friend or someone, but you don't want them to have permanent access to it. So what you can do here is set the expiry time on that file. So you can send it to them. After that time, they will not be able to access it anymore. So here's a question for you. Is there a particular day of the week when you need to remember to do something? For example, since I moved out of the city and into the sticks, they seem to only collect the recycling bins every two weeks, which means if I forget to put it out, I'm stuck with a month's worth of recycling by the time they next pick it up, which is an absolute nightmare. So this is something that's been very useful for me. Maybe you can think of a way that it could be useful for you too. This one only works with the Samsung clock app, which is this one here, the purple one. So what you can do here is set an alarm, let's say for every Thursday, and within that alarm, in the settings, if you scroll down, you'll see you can set a background for that alarm. Tap background at the top, you wanna to tap background here, and here you can choose an image of whatever it is that you need to be reminded about on that particular day. And there we go, that morning when that alarm goes off and I see a big green wheelie bin, I know what day it is and what I've got to do. Now, if you're lucky enough to have the Samsung Galaxy Ultra phone, then you might have seen the tips and tricks I did for the S Pen 
where you can actually create a design on the lock screen using the pen. And when you do this, it stays there for a while, but after a while it does disappear and all you'll see is this little pin icon here. Now, I found a way to bring back the artwork. All you need to do is double tap that pin and there we go. You got your custom hand-drawn artwork back on screen. Not my best work, but that's just a little tip from another video that I made on the Samsung Galaxy. And if you guys found this one valuable and you didn't see my killer features or first things to do or S Pen tips, they're all on screen right now. And normally I'd ask you to subscribe at this point, but nobody ever listens to me. So Picard, tell him. Make it so. I'll see you in the next one. Don't be late.